Um, Julia and Jack's reunion was really sweet, even if I A, don't want them together, and B, they decided to hug right in front of the doorway where anyone could see, even though this was technically supposed to be the first night that they met. These people are stupid sometimes. <laughs> You know, for being really smart, they can be sort of them. Um, but his thinking that he had the wrong out, the wrong house, was a little amusing. Um, basically, this scene between Jack and Sawyer reignited the power struggle that there is between them. Except this time, Sawyer is calling the shots, and S Sawyer, yes, Sawyer, sure as hell makes sure that Jack knows that he is in that position of power. Um, something I love about the episode is that they're really driving home the fact that it has been three years. Um, these people are different now. They're not the same people as before. Um, these two groups of people have completely different priorities. Uh, Sawyer, you know, Sawyer and all of them, they don't want, they want to keep the life that they built for themselves at this point, um, keep each other safe, including Jack and them. You know, Jack and company's priority is, well, they don't even really know what their priority is, I guess. But it sure as hell isn't settling down in 70s Dharma Initiative life. That's not why they came back, and they know it, and they're not gonna they're not gonna accept that. So I understand where both Jack and Sawyer are coming from in this scene. Jack has no idea about anything that's happening, so his frustration is valid. Um, they have no idea why they came back, and they're frustrated because they're out of the loop, so it makes sense. It's understandable. However, Jack really has no right, in my opinion, to criticize Sawyer for reading a book. Because, excuse me, did he not just spend all day working his ass off to save you people? He literally spent the entire day just working his ass off to make sure that these people could, you know, be accepted into this community. So... I mean, he's been working all day for you, to save your ass, so I think he deserves a bit of a rest. Um, you know, he did all he could do at the moment, you know, they're in the society, that's really all they can ask for at this point, it's time to just, for him to, yeah, I, story's right, it's time for him to think things through, not just act, 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 it, it's true. So I understand where story's coming from as well, and ultimately I guess I'm on his side for this one, even though... I understand Jack's patience and frustration, and even though Sawyer decided to sort of go on a massive power trip with his speech, in a really douchey way, it is sort of somewhat deserved. Um, even if I don't really agree with how much of an asshole he kind of was in that scene. In my opinion, even though I love Sawyer, I love him. Um, you know, why should Sawyer have to give up everything for these people? You know, he shouldn't have to, and I think that that's valid that he wouldn't want to or wouldn't be willing to do that. I don't think that makes him a bad person at all. I think it makes him human. So Sawyer takes the opportunity to tell Jack, um, you know, as a leader that he simply reacted to things, that he himself was a thinker, Sawyer was a thinker, thinks through things and thus is better or some such crap, and blamed Jack for some stuff that I honestly don't even feel that is stuff that is Jack's fault in any way. So that was sort of schmucky. Um, even if his general reaction to what Jack said, which is why are you reading, was again valid because what, what's his problem? So it's going to be interesting to see um, both sides of this that we're going to have a you know, how this all plays out, because this is honestly, this is clearly something that they're setting up to be a big thing. Because Jack is incapable of sitting around and doing nothing. He always needs to be acting. He does not have the patience to just function within the society. I think he's gonna fuck everything up because of his character flaws with needing to fix things. I really do. Um, you know, so this is sort of an uncomfortable situation since I really love all the people in both groups except for Kate. I don't really like seeing them pitted against each other this intensely, but at the same time, it's what makes for a good show, so. And then at the end, Saeed interacted with little Ben Linus, and is of course totally fascinated by the others, because Ben is like, I am so interested in the others, so he wants to bring Saeed a sandwich, because he thinks that he's another. I love the kid that plays little Ben, so I'm really happy to see him back again, because I think he's perfect. Um, I'm excited to see how he interacts with everyone. It looks to me that Saeed's already figured out that this is Little Ben. Just the look on his face. I mean, you could tell that it's him. Um, I'm wondering if Sawyer and all of them have interacted with him yet. 
because I, they must have. They really must have. And I want to know. I want answers. So on the 2007 front, we basically saw everything in between the events of the crash and Locke waking up. Frank landed the plane safely thanks to the partially built runway that the others had apparently been building at some point, which is basically what everyone seems to think what was what Jack, Kate, and Sawyer were ordered, or what Kate and Sawyer were ordered to uh, help build when they were um, held captive by the others. So, um, the big question I have is why Sun did not disappear with the rest of the Oceanic Six and land on the correct island. I really want an answer for that um, because they obviously disappeared for a reason. I don't want it to be just that they were holding off June and Sun's reunion or whatnot. Um, if they are reunited at some point. Um, you know, if they just did it for plot purposes, with, I mean, obviously it is for plot purposes, but if they don't have an explanation for it, I'm gonna be upset. Uh, we learned that Caesar and Alana have not met before, and that Caesar is essentially taking the Jack leadership role within the group of survivors. Uh, so Sun follows Ben, Frank follows Sun, Ben is as creepy as ever and doesn't even make an effort to not be creepy anymore. He's just creepy in the best way possible. Um, Sun knocks Ben out before they are about to travel to the main island. I personally think that this was a bad decision because even though Ben isn't trustworthy, Ben knows more about the island than Frank does. And I think that even if Ben had alternative motives and isn't doesn't really have Sun's interests in his, you know, in his interests or in his list of priorities, I, I think that sticking with Ben was probably the best bet. Um, as risky as it might be. Um, yeah, the smoke monster makes an unseen appearance. There are whispers when they get to the main island. Everything is abandoned and Christian Shepherd appears competing with Ben for the biggest creeper award. Don't know who's winning at this point. They're both really creepy. Um, yeah, they're creepy. Um, basically... <laughs> Christian says, oh, you want to know where Jin is? Follow me. So it's like, oh, oh, this is exciting. And then after a big lead up, Christian shows Sun a picture of Jin. whoop de freaking do it's, It was pretty underwhelming, that, that portion. It's okay, though. It's okay. Um, oh, and apparently she has a bit of a journey ahead of her. Whatever that means. What is Christian Shepard's deal? He's always taking people on crazy journeys, and I'm intrigued. Uh, and I'm wondering what Jun, Jun, Jin and Sun equal Jun, I guess. Um, what, <laughs> what Sun's journey is going to be. Oh, there's so much on the show that I just really can't wait to be explained. Hopefully it will be. So overall, this was a really great episode, and it's not really mainly because of the content, which was also really good, but it's ultimately, um, you know, it's ultimately more set up than anything, but it's really for the feel of the episode that I got, and the way that they set up the predicaments in the next portion of the season in an intriguing way. That kind of got me really into it. Just the bizarre feel it has and the idea that this is the way it's going to feel for the next few episodes at least. I'm so excited. So, I gave the episode an 8.2 and that's it for this week. See you next week for He's Our You episode 10.